five. I want to um, share with you um, what <clears throat> has been termed the mystery of God. And the mystery of God is answered in this Bible passage. And so <clears throat> the mystery of God is otherwise stated, what is God waiting for? And I appreciate uh, uh, Brother Mack's prayer about the imminent return uh, at any moment. Uh, we are fully, fully expecting our Savior's return, and yet we're not given a day, we're not given an hour, uh, but we ought to live as though uh, he's returning today. We ought to be living as though uh, we are expecting him at any moment. And, uh, and, um, it, but um, that is the mystery of God, is uh, what is God waiting for? And, uh, you know, someone else asked, why doesn't he return and, and just be done with all this wickedness and evil and suffering? Um, and someone else said, I just want this to, to just all be over. And, and others are saying, I'm tired. I just want to go home. And I'm hearing that more and more. People, God's people, uh, will, will just say, I'm just tired and I'm just ready to go home. And so uh, that, that's the mystery of God. What is God waiting for? And that is answered, um, that question is answered in this passage. And so we want to look at that. I pray that it will encourage us all. Um, and then uh, we're, while we're waiting for our Savior's return, um, the Bible even gives us from this passage uh, what, what we um, are to be doing. And so we'll look at that. Uh, uh, verse 7, though, uh, says, Be patient, be patient. Um, Macrothumio is, uh, is, that'd be the Greek word, macrothumio. And it is the word uh, that is translated patient. And uh, it uh, also means endure, okay? So uh, while we're waiting, we are to be patient. We are to patiently endure um, day and day uh, while we're waiting for our Savior's return. And uh, so... Uh, be, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. And uh, the Bible says, Behold, the husbandman waiteth. And so what is God waiting for? Well, the husbandman, that's a reference to the Lord. He's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. What's that, the precious fruit of the earth? How many of you got some of that fruit this morning that uh, was brought in by, uh, I think it was Sister Lenora, wasn't it? Uh, she got a phone call. How many cases did she mention to you? Uh, the caller said, I've got, I don't know how many hundreds of, hundreds of cases of fruit. <laughs> Would you please come and get some? And uh, so uh, beautiful uh, grapes and uh, you know, other produce and even vegetables and uh, and uh, what a blessing. Uh, but, but this fruit, this fruit, um, what, what fruit is that? Well, that's you. That's me. That's uh, everyone inside these, uh, the sanctuary and uh, everyone beyond the walls of this sanctuary and all around the world. That's the fruit. And that's what he's waiting for. And that's the answer to the mystery of God. He's waiting uh, for that, and, and notice he calls it precious, precious fruit. Not just fruit, precious fruit. Uh, and that's 
And, and that's because of the value. That's, you know, that's because of how much he loves you and how much he cares about you. And um, it's just, it's so important that we focus on, um, on that. You know, the world uh, works very hard to distract us away from uh, these, these important truths for our lives and uh, to, you know, preoccupy us, uh, you know, busy our lives all up. And, and um, we really need this encouragement from the Word of God, and especially as we, uh, you know, as we find ourselves, along with the rest of the world, going through a most unusual time in, um, I'm sure, the history of the world and uh, the way that, um, you know, it's affecting our lives. And uh, um, it's, it's all been very, very interesting, and uh, there's more to come. So, uh, but this is what we need to come back to, the Word of God, and, uh, and understand that, you know, this is why God is waiting um, I read a le letter from a missionary from Mexico City, uh, and I read it yesterday, and he reported that uh, the effect that this virus is having upon the people in the Mexico City area it has caused them to be more open to the gospel, the saving message of Jesus Christ, than any experience that he's that he's ever had before um, and in his letter he he shared uh, that he met with several uh, people in the in the open marketplace in the city and uh, engaged them in conversation ultimately led them to Christ and uh, for salvation uh, and you know so uh, what, what that letter is telling me is that, you know, through this, God is working, uh, tendering hearts, opening hearts, and people, you know, when everything was oh so good, everything was, you know, uh, going just fine, who were not open are now opening up to the Word of God. And so we... We uh, are praying that God will do that here in our city. And, uh, and so uh, we're sending the gospel out. Uh, we're doing that regularly uh, in batches of 5,000. And uh, we're asking God to bless his word. And we're praying for fruit that remains. We're asking God to, to um, you know, save souls. And I look forward to the time when we can... Um, in this area, we can uh, actually, uh, again, meet people and speak with people and share the gospel uh, and uh, that all of this fear, this apprehension about speaking with someone um, right now, that, that that'll fade away and that God will just, uh, he'll really use uh, the, the church and the ministry here. So... Um, if, if uh, precious, precious fruit of the earth, how valuable is this fruit? How, how much does this fruit mean to God? What, you know, what, what value uh, does he place on you? Well, for God so loved the world that he did what? He, he gave his only begotten son for you, for me. Not and the world, um, and uh, I want you to now. You, I'm going to ask you to look. I'm going to ask you to look here and there in the Bible. So, a uh, good way to start is mark your place right there. Amen. Uh, James uh, chapter five is kind of our kind of our um, outline for the message tonight. <clears throat> but uh, when you think about how precious you are to God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And that's a serious word, perish. It literally means to die and spend forever in hell. That's what the word means. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the value that God places on you and me and, and the world. Because remember, Christ died not just for your sins or not just my sins, but he died for the sins of the world. In fact, he took the sins of the world <clears throat> in his own body, according to Peter, and when he was nailed to the cross, it was for your sins that he died and atoned, he paid for, and it, his blood, his sinless blood cleanses those sins, washes those sins away, uh, the sins of those who are willing to receive Christ, accept him, believe in him. And so when we think about the precious fruit. This is the price that God paid for that fruit. Uh, for you, beloved, for me, for all, uh, really for the, the world. And, and now he just, he just waits uh, for uh, those, uh, those uh, choices to be made, uh, those decisions to be made. What, what is your decision about Jesus Christ? Uh, what, what decision have you made uh, and, and I have made? And, uh, you, you know, he's waiting. What is he waiting for? I mean, I mean, just stop and think about this. Don't you suppose if you paid a price like that, you'd, you'd wait a while too? If you, if you uh, paid uh, the life of your only begotten son, and you, and you sacrificed your only begotten son to pay for the sins of the world? I, I think we can understand maybe just a little bit having paid that kind of a price and made that kind of a sacrifice, why he's waiting. I mean, look, I know we get tired, amen? Would you agree with that, we get tired? How many, how many here have ever actually gotten to the place where you just really do wish the Lord would just come? I just, you know, I really, Lord, I'd just like to go home. I mean, you ever been there? Well, you'll probably be there again before it's all said and done, you know. Um, given the realities of life and the battles of life and the trials of life and the hardships of life and all of the troubles of life, but um, God is, is willing to help us through all of that. And he just waits for our invitation unto him to come into our lives. And, and so, yeah, I look at verse 17 for God of John 3, verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world. So we know it, we're, plainly we're saying that, that it is God who sent his son into the world. <laughs> and... Uh, he did that because he loves you. He wants to save you, uh, save you from sin. He wants to save you from, uh, he wants to save you from the world, uh, whose God is the devil, and, uh, and he wants to save you uh, from hell. And, uh, and only he can do that. He's the only one who can do that. And so, uh, but, but notice verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through Jesus, might be saved. Praise God for that. Remember, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's the only way. He's the only way uh, unto salvation, eternal life with God in heaven. He's just the only way. And but... Don't forget this, not only is he the only way uh, to heaven, 
but he wants to walk with you every day in your life. He wants to be there for you. He wants to encourage you. He just wants to love you. He wants to help you. He wants to guide you. He wants to provide for you. He wants to protect you. He just wants to be there for you. And, um, and he is there for you. Remember, to those who will, you know, will accept him, his great promise, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm telling you. And I'll tell you this, you'll never have to worry about Jesus ever leaving you. Um, he'll never do that to you. And, you know, and what's remarkable about that is his, um, his nearest, dearest followers, they, they all forsook him and fled. Of course, you know, um, God forgave him. Praise God. He's a forgiving God. He's a loving God, a merciful God. But what his disciples did to him, he'll never do to you. He'll never do to me. Uh, and, you know, people still leave him today. I'm sad to say. I mean, I wish it were not the case. But for whatever the reason, for many reasons, people still leave him today. We heard, we heard in the Sunday school lesson this morning, if you were here at the 930 hour, what a great lesson that was. Um, and uh, Brother Mullins just, uh, he just stated the obvious. And, and, and what he said is that so many people are leaving. They're just walking away from God. They're walking away from his church. They're just, just turning their backs and walking away from, um, you know, uh, the Lord and, and uh, everything that God has, has uh, provided for them. And, and just, uh, and, and, and it's acute right now. It's, a, it's especially um, ramping up right now, um, and um, but uh, you know we'll we'll look at that here in just a moment. So as so we go back to James chapter five, and uh, so the mystery of God. What is God waiting for? He's waiting for you. You say, well, I, I've already come to Him. I've already accepted Jesus. I already know Him. Well, then he's waiting, for, he's waiting for someone that you know and love. He's waiting for someone that you care about who does not know him yet. Might be your spouse, might be a sibling, might be a, you know, a parent, a grandparent. It might be a co-worker. Could be a friend. I mean, but he's waiting now for them. And what, what, I, would, what I would counsel you to do, and it's what I need to be doing, and I think we ought to do it every day. I really do. I think, we ought to be, I think we ought to be asking God every day to give us those opportunities to share him with someone else. Amen? Lord, Lord, please, please, uh, Lord, open a door. Give me an opportunity to share you somehow, some way, to share you, to share your love with another person. You know, God's, God's all about people. See, uh, the world is all about things. You know, the world, hey, I got something and, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll sell it to you. And that's, that's the world, you know. Uh, but God is about people. And, um, and that's, what, that's what he cares about. And uh, that's, why, that's why he sacrificed his son. So... Um, Sin, sin came between us and God. Your sins have come between you and your God. I believe it's the prophet Amos that, uh, that inspired to speak that. Uh, and Jesus, when we uh, repent and we turn from our sins back to God, we turn to God by faith, accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior. He those sins that were between us and God, he, he takes them out of the way. And we're able to have a personal relationship. A relationship. Um, Abraham was called the friend of God. Amen? I mean, 
Who wouldn't want to have God as their friend? Amen. To have God as their very best friend. And that is possible. And it's, it's all because of Jesus. And those sins are forgiven. And, and God says, I, you know, he forgets those sins. He, he does not remember those sins against us. And we're able to come into a relationship with God and spend every day with him. And, uh, and he's there for us all of the time. No matter, no matter what's going on in the world, and I'll tell you what, is it just me or is it getting is it getting pretty wild in the world right now? Not just the United States of America. I'm telling you what. Have you looked all over the earth? It's just erupting. And uh, there's just a lot happening in the world right now. But uh, the key is, is, is to be in that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, to know him and just trust him. And God is able and God is faithful uh, to take care of you through uh, times like these are. Oh, yes, God is able to do that. And God will do that. And so... Uh, James 5 and verse number 7, Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. You know, <clears throat> when he was here upon the earth, uh, he certainly, uh, certainly did. Uh, we read about the thousands and the thousands, and God only knows how many came to Jesus 2,000 years ago, and uh, I believe that uh, as we come to the end of time, these last days, and certainly the birth pangs are all around us, oh my, uh, that, that are all pointing to the return of Jesus. I think the return of Jesus in the air and uh, the, that, that moment that he will catch us up to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with our Lord, you know, I think we're, uh, all indications are that uh, we're, on, we're on track coming to that very moment. Um, and uh, we just do a quick survey of everything that's going on in the world. And everything that is going on in the world is precisely what Jesus told us would be going on in the world just prior to his return. So, you know, connecting the dots uh, it all makes perfect sense according to the word of God. So he hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. <clears throat> and that's that harvest of souls. He's after, he's after those precious, that precious fruit uh, of the earth, uh, the souls of men and women and, and of all who will, will come to Jesus, um, trusting him, believing in him, uh, by faith for the salvation of their, of their souls and uh, the forgiveness of their sins. Now here in verse 8, so while, while we're waiting, and we understand that God has long patience, uh, this is what we, we are instructed uh, to do by God. Now notice in verse number 8, uh, here God says, Be ye also patient. Okay? Be also patient. Establish your hearts. Now watch this. Look what God tells us. And, this, and these words were written how many years ago? About, about 2,000 years ago. And this is what God said 2,000 years ago. And now 2,000 years later. Look what he said 2,000 years ago. For the coming of the Lord, what? It, it means it's getting close. 2,000 years ago, the Lord said, my coming is getting close. Now, these 2,000 years later, how much closer are we now than they were 2,000 years ago? And yes, I believe his coming is, uh, is drawing nigh, absolutely. And, and so, um, understanding the mystery of God, that God is waiting for the precious fruit, um, and I hope that 
I hope that you know, uh, I hope you know him. I hope you've believed in Jesus. I hope you're, you've accepted him as your own personal savior. Um, and if you have, you know, praise the Lord. Thank God every day because he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you no matter what happens in this world. Um, there's a lot happening right now. There's a lot of trouble. And, and it's probably going to go from bad to worse. Um, but you know what? God will see you through. God will take care of you. And uh, we, uh, we need to be patient. Now, this word, uh, or patient in endurance, it means to be of long spirit, not to lose heart. I think, honestly, a lot of people are just giving up. A lot of people are just giving up. They're just quitting. As we think about a mass exodus from uh, the, the Lord's, uh, you know, his local New Testament church that Jesus, that Jesus founded 2,000 years ago, that he established, and uh, I, you know, people are just uh, you know, walking away from the Lord, walking away from... Uh, from uh, his church, and uh, and really, really walking away from his great plan for their lives. Um, but we are not to lose heart. We we are to bra- bravely endure misfortunes and troubles because packed into this word patience and endurance, uh, makrothumio in the Greek, packed into that word is this definition, <clears throat> and so. Um, or to bravely endure misfortunes and troubles. Um, and you know what? We're all going to have those. We've probably already had those. Or we're having trouble and misfortune right now. Or we're going to experience all of that. But you need to understand what God is doing when we meet with trouble or misfortune, you know, trials, you know, trials of life, um, the, the trials of our faith. Please understand, it's important that you remember that God is growing us into, into a more perfect and complete dependence and reliance upon Him. And that's what those troubles and trials and I tell you what, even heartbreaks, that's what all of that should, should be uh, moving us closer to our God. Listen, the only time, the only time that uh, the difficulties of life don't move us closer to God is when we start blaming God for them. But it's never reasonable to blame God. It's never right to fault or blame God. Now, if you want to go back to the first man, and you want to do, you know, uh, you know, uh, but don't blame God. I mean, God, we talked about this morning, made the first man and. From what did God make the first man? Was anybody listening? Dust. Dust. You know, and uh, <clears throat> God did some remarkable things with that dust. You've got 100,000 miles of blood vessels in your body. Your blood vessels have put end to end would go around the earth four times, Brother Cecil. <laughs> God did some remarkable things with that dust, did he not? You've got 30 trillion cells in your body. 30 trillion cells in your body. And I think 206 bones. God did some amazing things with that dust, didn't he? And, uh, you know, but if you want to assign blame, don't, don't pin it on God. All God did was create the first man, and then from the rib of the man, he made the woman, and he put them in paradise. He put them in a sinless environment. <laughs> and there, there the tempter came, and, temp, and you know, their, their love for God was tested. And the way that was tested was by temptation. 
And uh, of course, uh, you know the story. They, <clears throat> they fell into sin against God. And, uh, well, read the headlines today. Look at what's happening today. And, you know, so um, don't blame God. Um, the only thing that God has done was sacrifice his son, Jesus Christ, after the fall of man into sin, to come and pay for those sins so that we could be forgiven and be saved from hell. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's, there's what God did. It was Adam that fell into sin, and, and Eve fell into sin. And uh, all of the uh, sickness, all of the disease, all, yeah, disease, boy, that's in the headlines a lot. All of the, uh, all of the uh, you know, the heartbreak, uh, you know, uh, the pain, the suffering, the tears, I mean, all of that. That belongs to man, not God. That, that's what man did, not God. And so all of these troubles that we meet with in life, you need to understand that, that God, God will work through that to move us closer to him and get us, bring us closer to him. And... and and God will allow those things to happen to, um, to test our faith. And so that when it's all said and done, we're not going to be relying on self. We're going to be, we're going to be left totally depending upon God. Now, that's, that's never a bad thing. Have you, ever depend, have you ever depended on somebody that has let you down? Have you ever depended on somebody that has, that, you know, um, they didn't follow through, they didn't keep their word, they didn't do what they promised you that they would do? See, see, God will never do that to you. So um, it's just so important that we patiently endure while we're waiting for Jesus to return. Because, and we need to understand, we go through all of these troubles and you know heartbreaks and trials that that God is able to work even through all of that to bring us closer to himself it's good to be close to him because unlike so many other people he will never let you down he will never fail you he will never not keep his promise to you God will never do that to you so I hope, I hope that when you, you, you know, go through troubles and trials, I hope that that will move you closer to the one who will never turn his back on you, to the one who will never leave you, never forsake you, uh, to the one that will always be there to take care of you. Um, and, and so, uh, and, and as we get closer to him, yes, certainly, we're able to be, uh, we're able to be, um, endure. We're able to exhibit patience, which is endurance. And, and for, you know, for the final stretch of the journey here, I, I really think we're, we are on the final leg of the journey here uh, that will bring us right up unto the coming of the Lord. Now, um, I want you to go to, I want you to go to the Gospel of John, please. It, again, mark your place. It'll help you if you'll mark your place in James. But I want you to see something in John chapter 6. If you would, please, John chapter 6. And just so glad that we, we get to spend uh, just some great time with our Lord around His Word this evening, this Sunday evening. And... Uh, just good to see all of you here. It's encouraging. And I'm just so thankful I get to be here. Amen. Um, that is not the case in all churches. Uh, some churches right now are absolutely um, told they cannot assemble together. They cannot sing. 
uh, you know, inside of the church building, you know, the sanctuary. <laughs> and we need to be remembering our brothers and sisters as they go through those trials. Look at John chapter 6, all right? And then I want you to look at verse 66. And I'm going to read through verse number 69. So John 6 and verse 66. <clears throat> From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Now, this is known as the unpopular ministry of Christ. This is what the theologians, they refer to it as uh, that time that they term his unpopular ministry. And uh, because he, his teachings uh, were falling out of favor and acceptance of the people. And, uh, well, you see, the Bible says many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. That, you know, that even happened to Jesus. Even, even Jesus. I mean... None greater, none greater, none is equal. You know, he is God. And um, in, in his, you know, earlier in his ministry, we find thousands of people thronging him um, by the thousands uh, wanting to hear his word. But now we find many of his disciples that walk no more with him. Uh, now look at verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve Will ye also go away? Isn't that interesting? 2,000 years ago, when many, not a few, but many, walked away from Jesus, they, would no lo they just turned their back on him, they left him, and they would no longer walk with him. Um, because, because he was losing his popularity. And... and uh, I guess I guess it's it's kind of like this. They were along for the good times. They were along for the good times. But but when the times weren't so good, they turned their back on him and they, they walked away from him and they left him. And so Jesus looked at his core group of disciples, the twelve, and uh, at the time that he that he poses this question one of those disciples would be possessed of the devil. One out of those 12 uh, would actually sell him for how many pieces of silver? 30? Yeah, sell him. <laughs> you know, it, it, but look what he says. And um, he said... Um, Will ye also go away? What if Jesus were to ask you that question? What would your answer be to him? Will ye also go away? Right. Uh, remember, this is the living word of God. This is the eternal word of God. And, and I think this question reverberates through the centuries. And I think this is a question that is asked by God again and again and again uh, through the generations of his uh, people, in, uh, especially in his church. He says, will ye also go away? Now, I, stay with me. Look at verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord... Now look what Simon Peter says. Lord, to whom shall we go? Stop and think about that. That's Simon Peter. I, I think that is one of the most remarkable responses that, that there could be to the question of Jesus. To whom shall we go? You know, to that person today, in these last days, these closing days, these final moments just before Jesus returns? If you, if you turn your back on Jesus and walk away from him, 
to whom, to whom will you go? To, to whom will you go? Well, I mean, look, you, you that know Christ, you that know Jesus, you that have accepted Jesus, you came out of the world accepting him as your own personal savior. Having tasted him and how good he is, having experienced the Lord, would you now go back to the very thing you left before you came to him? Would you now go back to the very thing that does not fulfill you, that does not satisfy you, that does not meet your needs? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Would you go back to that which left you empty and lonely, the world, after you've experienced Jesus for, well, however long you've known him, for me, it's been, uh, I, I, I met him March 11th of 1972. <laughs> Uh, so over four decades, you know, that's what a question from Simon Peter, to whom shall we go? And then Peter continues by making this statement in verse 68, thou hast the words of eternal life. So, uh, would you go back to the lies would you go back to the falsehoods? Would you go back to the theories of the world? Uh, the foolishness of the world? The emptiness of the world? After uh, spending all of uh, these years with the one who has the words of eternal life? Who, who knows everything that there is to be known about life? Who has all of the wisdom of life? Who has all of the knowledge of life? Um, who has all of the guidance uh, that you need through life, w would you turn your back on him and walk away from him uh, when uh, times, uh, you know, when times uh, get difficult, hard, and, and they are, they are, they are becoming difficult. They are, they are hard right now. Um, Wow, what's going on, what's happening to some uh, churches of like faith and practice, um, and they're absolutely being devastated uh, right now. But Jesus asks, will you go away also? And uh, verse 69, and Peter continues, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ. He's, he's the anointed. He's, he's Emmanuel. He's, he's God with us. Um, he is God the Son, uh, the Son of God. He is, he is, he is God incarnate. He, he is God enveloped in a, in, a, in a physical body that came to this earth for the, the purpose of dying to pay to atone for my sins against God, that I would then uh, be saved by accepting him, believing only in Jesus Christ for the salvation of my soul. I mean, what, question, where is there to go? These people that are, these people that are not being patient, these people that are not enduring, these people that are walking away from God and, and going back out into the nothingness, the emptiness, the loneliness, the meaninglessness of the world, I really don't think they're thinking. I really just don't think they're thinking. Um, when they turn their back on the only one that can, can really help them uh, with, with every need of their life. Does God stop loving them? No. But I can't help but think that many 
have stopped loving God. You know, um, you ever had somebody stop loving you? You know, loved you and now they no longer love you. I used to love you. Now I don't even want to see you. I don't even want to talk to you. I don't want to see your face. I don't. I could care less about you. Do you know how that makes God feel? Because we're created in his image. And if, if that breaks our heart, that kind of rejection, how must that make, how, how must, must that make him feel? I, I mean, look, you talk about the selfishness, the selfish, selfishness of people that, uh, that, are, that are doing that, and doing that by the droves to, uh, to God. And, uh, but Peter's not going to do that, no. He's, I mean, you know, here, here by his words, um, we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. So, um, the Bible, um, we, are, we are admonished to endure until the end. Uh, the Bible I'll give you the reference, uh, Matthew 24, 13, where to endure until the end. Um, in, in Mark chapter 4, and uh, I'll just give you the references, verse 16 and 17, we are to endure persecution. In, in, second, in second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4, we are to endure life's crushing troubles. Uh, in uh, in uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 um, and uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, we are, we are to endure uh, the fight of our faith uh, in Jesus Christ. You have to understand this is what the enemy, uh, this is what he is working uh, to destroy in your life is your faith faith, your belief, your trust in Jesus Christ, in God. He works nonstop. He works tirelessly to destroy your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, would you look quickly at Ephesians chapter 6? And I am mindful of the uh, hour, but... uh, Ephesians chapter number 6, and I want you to uh, just look at uh, verses 10, 11, 12, and 13. Ephesians 6, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. That ye may look, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's going to go after your faith. He's going to go after your marriage. He's going to go after your family. He's going to go after your church. He's going to. He's going to go after every facet of your life to totally destroy. And how how are we going to withstand uh, that kind of an attack? Well, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness, of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Armor? That sounds like some kind of warfare. You you better believe it's warfare. It's spiritual warfare. Yeah. And you're to take the armor that God provides and put it on and never take it off that ye may be able to withstand, see, in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So God provides you the armor. It's listed, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, 
the helmet of salvation, prayer, uh, and all of the pieces of the armor are right there in the following verses. But above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith, see it, verse 16, ye shall be able to quench all, not some, not part, all, the fiery darts of the wicked. No matter what you meet with, no matter, no matter what it is, no matter what you come upon or comes into your life, you keep the faith. You may not understand what's going on. You may not understand why, but keep the faith. Raise the shield of faith. Keep trusting and believing God. And claim his promises, his promises to protect you, his promises to provide for you, his promises to comfort you, his promises to help you. And you recite his promises back unto him. Let God hear those promises. And a good time to let God hear those promises is when you're on your knees with the open Bible and you can read his promises right back to him. And uh, you know what? Give God his word. Uh, but we're to endure. Um, and in our love for Jesus Christ, 2 Timothy 4, 5 through 8, yes, we're to endure in our love for Jesus Christ. Uh, don't quit. Don't give up. Look at Hebrews chapter 6, please. And listen, uh, you know, wow, preacher, you sound like you sound like t things could e get even tougher than they already are. Wow, preacher. Yeah, the closer we get to the return of Jesus, that's uh, yeah, that's. I get every indication from the Word of God that uh, it's not going to get easier. Um. But look at this, if you would, please, Hebrews chapter, um, what did I tell you? Hebrews chapter 10 is where I need you to be, please. Hebrews 10 and verse number 35. Now look, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Hebrews 10, 35. For ye have need of patience. That's endurance that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So God's telling you right there, you're going to go through some, you're going to go through some hard, hardships and, you know, some trials. You're going to go through some times of testing and you're going to go through it. God says you have need of patience. And by the way, what is it that builds patience? Does anybody know what it is that increases patience? Some Christians say, I never, I never pray for patience. I never ask God to give me patience. Yeah, you know, that's what the Bible says. Tribulation worketh patience. That's how God, that's how God builds patience, which, yeah, and endurance in our lives is through tribulation. You say, well, I don't like it. <laughs> Look, if it weren't for that, I'm going to say something here, flat out to you. If it weren't for tribulation that God allows into your life, you would have already quit him. It is because of the tribulation that you have the patience, that you have the endurance. So, you know, instead of bemoaning it, I mean, um, you know, thank God that he is building. You're going to need it, folks. You're going to need it. You're going to need it to make it. To endure to the end, you're going to need patience that only God can give you. And you're going to get that through tribulation. And so am I. Yeah. Wow. Um, let's, let me finish up here. And uh, verse, uh, verse uh, 37 of Hebrews 10, For yet a little while... 
And he that shall come will come. Amen. And will not tarry. You see, just a little while. Yet a little while. It's not going to... It was just a little while 2,000 years ago. I mean, how much less time is it now 2,000 years later? I mean, it's even a littler while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, which is what Brother Mullins taught this morning, people are doing, they're drawing back from God. They're pulling back from God. Let me, let me tell you something. Look, uh, the last thing you want to do when times are getting tough and times are getting hard, the last thing you want to do is pull back from God. You want to run to God, amen? Not run away from God. But many are running to the world Many are running from God back out to the world. What's the world going to do for them? That's where all the problems are. The world is, is like trying to find a way to solve the problems, but the problems just keep growing just in, and keep increasing. I mean, you got, you got 19,000 people right now in this city that just received a letter stating that they're, you're terminated. You got, you, you know, pardon me, that's 19,000 of employees of one of the biggest beverage soft drink companies in the world just received notification you're being terminated. 19,000 employees in this city, pardon me, it was 18,000 employees have just received a letter of severance that uh, you're no longer needed. Uh, the airlines has 17,000 people being terminated, uh, one of the airlines. And, and the world can't even solve its own problems. And people are turning their back on God and running out to that. Now they need to be running to God, not away from God. And uh, so, if any man draw back, God says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. <laughs> not good. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. The word perdition means destruction. The ultimate end of those who draw back from God, and God just tells us, plainly states it, is destruction, perdition. That, that is the consequence, that is the end of those who pull back from God. It's destruction. Um, but we are, we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Praise God. So um, I would just encourage you by the word of God uh, in, in this way. Uh, to, you know, I cannot tell you how many times I've just come to the place where I just, I just, I say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm so ready, Lord, you know. Um, but what God said to me and really what he said to all of us, if he were ready, if God were ready, we would already be with him. Those of us that know Christ, we'd be with him. If he were ready to return, we'd be with him. Evidently, while I may be ready, you may be ready, he's not ready. And why isn't he ready? Because there's another lost soul out there that Jesus died for that God loves. And he wants this church to get the gospel to them. Because nobody gets saved. You understand it? Nobody gets saved without the gospel. Listen, that's why I'm handing gospel tracts out to people. When I connect with people, maybe somebody helps me, does something for me. My wife here, she had an employ, a fellow employee yesterday that was last day of work, and she 
made a special trip to go over there and give her a gospel tract and a gift, a small token gift. Um, lady helped me yesterday at one of the grocery stores, got out to the car. Holy Spirit said, uh, I want you to take a gospel tract and give that to her. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, I thought, well, all right. I better say all right, amen. Better say all right when God's dealing with me and convicting me. I walked back in there, gave her a gospel tract, and, uh, and of course, uh, she received it uh, very, very well. Uh, God is waiting for lost souls, and he wants this church to be getting the message out. And while we're waiting, while we're waiting on him, and we're going through all of these trials of life, um, don't forget, he's letting you go through those trials to move you closer to him, because the closer you get to him, the stronger you will be. You need to be closer to him, and so do I. And God has his ways of getting us closer to him. And, and if you know somebody that's lost, if you, you have a loved one, uh, a friend, a neighbor, co-worker, you know somebody that's lost, you ought to be glad he's waiting to come back. You ought to be glad he hasn't come back yet because, you know, if that lost soul dies without Jesus, it's forever in hell. It's forever in hell. It won't be God's fault. Uh, we need to be sharing the gospel, getting the gospel out. Uh, let's pray. Father, uh, Lord, uh, thank you so much for these words of encouragement from uh, the Holy Bible. We need this, Lord. These are irregular times. These are, these are amazing times. These are wonderful times. Uh, times that we don't understand. Um, and there's a lot of guessing going on. Um, people trying to figure out what in this world is going on and why is this happening and all kinds of theories floating around. And, but the fact is it's happening, whether we understand it or not. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's affecting churches. It's affecting this church. It's affecting uh, uh, churches all across, well, all around the world. Um, in, in various ways, but Lord, thank you for reminding us that we just need to keep believing you, trusting you. We need to keep praying and depending on you um, because Lord, you're still able. You are still able to do everything that needs to be done for this church and you're faithful God and, uh, and you're amazing and we cannot thank you and praise you enough. And so I trust, God, that we give you our hearts, we give you our lives, and, uh, Lord, we live in the hope that you will use us, use this church to plant the gospel seed in this city. Um, I think we've just, just about reached 100,000 families uh, we've we've just got over 500 more 500 more thousand families yet to go, but God, we're trusting that before you return, you'll just make it possible for us to get the gospel to to as many of the households of this city as uh, as uh, there are. God, we just uh, we believe that is the principle purpose for this church is to preach the gospel to every creature. And we want to thank you so much, Father, for the gospel that uh, should we uh, believe and accept Jesus Christ uh, is the power of God to save our souls. In fact, right now, if, Lord, there's anyone that has joined in the Bible study that has not yet accepted Jesus Christ my prayer is, and I think the prayer of this church is, that that person or persons right now, wherever they are, would just, um, just pray 
in total sincerity and just say to you and admit to you that they've sinned against you. They've broken, they've broken your commandments. That's sin. They'd admit it. They'd confess it. And that they would then just pray, Lord Jesus, please come into my life and forgive me of all of my sins. And, they, and I pray, Father, you would hear them uh, pray, uh, asking Jesus to save them, to save their soul, uh, that they may spend forever with you in your heaven, but that they might spend the rest of their life with you here upon earth. And enjoy your fellowship, your presence, um, your, your love, your blessings upon their lives. I, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, along with other Christians here tonight, uh, that uh, you would be invited by many who are listening uh, to come into their, their lives right now as they accept Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. Uh, Lord, um, bless your word, I pray. Bless all of the gospels that are going out to these uh, households. Um, the the uh, gospel tracts that uh, we're handing out person to person as we meet people this coming week. Just uh, giving them that, uh, just sharing that love of God and uh, that friendly invitation. And uh, Lord, uh, we'll, we'll just be so thankful to you for all that uh, you're going to do because you've promised that you would and, uh, and you keep your promises. Uh, bless, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.